So you want to get better at painting? Well, here's my top five tips that I would give you. Hi guys, and welcome back to Grim Dark for uh, the first in a series of tips videos, essentially about things I've been asked over the years. I've been a hobbyist for longer than I'd like to admit, uh, and I have been a commissioned painter in the past, and I've also built things for people. So I like to think I've got a pretty rounded experience of the hobby. So if anything I can do can help you, then I'm all for that. So tip number one which is more for people who are already painting, but even if you're just beginning to paint, is to buy one of these, or make one. This is a wet palette. Uh, and basically all it is, is some sort of container with some cartridge paper in the bottom that you pour water onto and it stays wet. And then it has a permeable um, sort of greaseproof paper on top of it that you put paint on. Now, if you look at mine, this was 10 pounds on Amazon, guys. No money at all. A lot of these paints are still wet, a lot of them are mixes of colours and these paints have been in use I would say now for three weeks. You know I just occasionally lift up this bit of paper, it's a bit wet, sorry guys. So yeah I just lift up the paper like that and then I'll just pour water onto this cartridge paper and I'm good to go. And the thing I find the best about this is the fact that you don't have to worry about your paints drying out so you can take more time. Also, like me, if you're like me and you mix paints and you get tired or whatever, you can just put the lid on this, come back the next day and your mix is still there. You don't have to worry about how much of this went in. Was it was DACA red? Was it Calibran green in this? Or, you know, it just removes that. So I would highly recommend picking up one of these, especially if you're already painting and you're struggling. Tip number two, and I would advise everyone does this, is always always prime your models okay never just start putting paint on them so I would basically always prime mine with black I use black for pretty much anything if you're working in a, a kind of lighter color sphere if you want a lighter part of the, col uh, the color wheel then go for a white even a gray but something like um, chaos black Corax white or Mechanicus standard gray if you're buying from Citadel army painter have other really really good paints as well um, and I find that if you don't prime what you tend to get is a really kind of patchy blotchy main color for instance if you're working on something like let's take this this leviathan this has been primed black and then it's had uh, the fangs sprayed on top of it and it's a really even blue which is sometimes hard to achieve with resin models like this but it's a really even blue and then I'll go to the airbrush and work up from there. So tip number three is about brushes. I'm often asked about brushes. Do I have to buy really expensive brushes? Do I have to go out and shell out lots and lots of money on Windsor & Newtons? Are cheap brushes good? And really, to be honest guys, I have got Winder, Windsor & Newton brushes. I've got um, Opus Artist brushes that I really, really like. I don't use them a lot. I use them mainly for detail work uh, and for set piece models. Um, what I tend to use is, and this, where are the rest of them? Sorry guys, here we go. I have a selection of Citadel and Army Painter brushes that I use all the time. I've got really crap brushes, like this is just one that I picked up from an art shop for dry brushing, because they're basically throw away. Um, but what I would say is there's no hard and set rule. I've got so much junk there, sorry guys. There's no hard and set rule. I would say buy a starter kit from Games Workshop and buy a starter kit from um, Army Painter and see what you prefer. I mean, this is the brush here that I use for, I would say, 90% of the painting I do. It's an Army Painter uh, regiment brush. And the reason I use this all the time is that I find that the, the head is kind of small enough for me to do kind of medium detail work, but also large enough for me to do large areas. Or sh and I, I use this for everything, for base coating, for shading. It doesn't get special treatment. Um, and I really like the triangular grip. I find that I can paint for a long time with this, and that, but that's personal preference. Um, I also use these Citadel brushes. Uh, and again, this would be the one I use the most. It's just a medium layer brush. I find that's the perfect size for me. 
But then again, I also go all the way down to something like this. There's a really tiny, uh, insane detail brush, again from Army Painter. And again, I tend to favour the Army Painter detail brushes because I like the kind of ergonomic feel of the, uh, of the brush handle, essentially. But again, buy a couple of starter sets. You're talking about £25, and then you'll have a really good idea of where you are. Tip number four, which is going to sound a bit daft, is um, clean your water, guys. Uh, especially if you're using water to thin down paints, and you should be. You should never be using paint straight out of the pot. So this is kind of two tips. Always thin your paints. Never, ever use paint straight out of the pot, unless you have air paints um, like this. Where is the box? I'm lucky enough um, to have the set, the full range of Citadel air paints. Um, these I find are thin enough to use straight out of the pot and um, they're still a bit thick for the airbrush they still need to be thinned down a little bit um, but if you're using let's get rid of that if you're using standard paints always thin them so make sure you've got clean water do not thin paints with water like that this is water I've used for a while I need to clean it out um, and especially when you're going to a metallic and then you're going back from metallic to another paint or a different metallic Clean your water immediately because that metallic will contaminate anything else you're doing. Um, I find a lot of people, for instance, have trouble with whites and yellows, and it's often because their water looks like this. Um, you are never going to get a clean white or a clean yellow hue if you're using dirty water. Sounds really stupid, but lots of people do it. I've seen people do it, so I'm telling you now, guys. Top tip number four: just clean out your water. And the final tip, tip five, is to look after your equipment. Um, you know, you wouldn't use a car for years and years without getting it MOT'd or taking it to the mechanics. There's nothing wrong with it. So look after your brushes, guys. Um, if you can, every time you're finished cleaning them, or finished using them, I should say, clean your brushes. And I don't mean just with water. I mean, get some of this stuff. This is a brush cleaner and preserver. I can't remember how much this was, but you can find it on Amazon. It's maybe £10 for this pot. I've had this pot for three years, and I've used hardly any of it. Um, it smells like it's almost a kind of citrus compound, but this stuff's great. I've used this for years and years and years. Even brushes look destroyed, like this, this um, regiment brush is two years old, and the tip looks wrecked at the moment because I've been painting metallics then going to shades then going back to metallics I've been breaking all my own rules but I've been needing to get things done so I've, I have abused this brush over the last few days but I know if I put this stuff on it and leave it for you know five minutes and then just rinse it with hot water it just rejuvenates that brush so when you go to use it again the next day it's got a really nice tip on it it feels supple again um, even if you forget like recently I was on holiday and I, I went away visiting friends and I left like 10 brushes with this stuff on it for four days came back this hardened on it rinsed it under hot water and the brushes were absolutely fine and i could use them again so there you go guys those are my uh, top five tips and i think if you follow those you're probably going to be in a good place and you won't find painting as frustrating um as you do now or you may do in the future as you get more into the hobby and um, Painting is something I think you should really enjoy. I don't think a lot of people do. I think they see it as a chore. You know, they, they buy a lot of models, they build them, and then they're like, oh God, I've got to paint them. Whereas I buy a lot of models. I, I've, I bought 60 models uh, in one go for my word bearers, 30K army, and I was like, am, and was still looking forward to finishing painting them. I'm going through that process. And I think if you look at it from that point of view and you follow some simple basics, like, you know, if you can afford one, get a wet palette. Try a couple of different brushes, see which ones you want. Um, look after your brushes, always base your miniatures. You're gonna find yourself having a much easier time when it comes to getting the aesthetic that you're looking for. Um, you know, might not be where you wanna end your journey, but it's certainly a great place to start. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you again in another great video. Bye.